But now more and more their eyes are being opened to see that, whoa, there is something really here. Uh, this technology has been vetted uh, by several physicists and chemists. And, and he, he is fortunate in that he has a very high power team of, of business folks, uh, credentialed scientists behind him now. And, and he's launching his, his process next year to start replacing the polluting fossil fuel uh, that's used for our central uh, power generation at, 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 at uh, power plants with the black light power process, which is non-polluting and it's, it's recyclable, the process itself. And the hydrogen that's come, that comes to this process is generated from water instead of from natural gas. So uh, this is a tremendous breakthrough, tremendous breakthrough. And you hardly ever see a blurb about it unless you know where to look. Well, guess what? It's in, it's in Breakthrough Power. You can read about it there, and you can find it uh, with, with links from the New Energy Movement websites and the New Energy Congress website. That's one technology. Another one is, is, is water as fuel technologies for powering vehicles. Uh, there's an inventor who's no longer among us, but his name was Stanley Meyer. And he invented a process that could break down water using a, a novel electronic technique into hydrogen and oxygen and use that as the fuel for his vehicle. And he had vetted by, by several credentialed uh, witnesses a car that would got 190 miles to the gallon. All right. Well, you think that that was welcomed into the market? No, it wasn't. Well, fortunately, there's a lot of, lot of folks who are trying to resurrect that technology uh, or, or bring out a hybrid of that type of technology and some that might even be better. Uh, one of the groups that is helping to lead uh, uh, that effort is Dr. Stephen Greer, who has uh, inaugurated a project called the Orion Project. Well, those are a couple of technologies, and, and I'm not going to take, take much more of your time here, but, but I, I do want to just give a, a quick acknowledgement to those who have served as my own mentors in this journey. Uh, first among them is Dr. Brian O'Leary. Uh, Dr. O'Leary, for decades, had investigated around the world claims of anomalous energy technologies and other phenomena. And he was willing to put his own scientific credentials at, at risk and also be the brunt of a lot of ridicule and even uh, what some might call blackballing of him uh, from the mainstream because of his passion to seek out what is true. And, and Brian is about truth. And uh, he's taught me a lot along the way about what I might expect as I, as I explore and try to take this topic of new energy into political circles and other mainstream circles. And I, I've learned a lot from him in that regard. And Brian's a dear friend. He also is the founder of New Energy Movement. Uh, and I've, I've been privileged to serve as, as the president of the US, uh, a nonprofit organization, and uh, continue in the line uh, that Brian established. Also, Dr. Stephen Greer, who I mentioned earlier, has been another mentor of mine, uh, both through my, my work with him on the Dis uh, Disclosure Project, uh, which examines uh, how we might bring out into the public domain technologies that have been secreted into uh, these black budget projects over the last number of decades. Because there's a number of, of breakthrough energy technologies and advanced propulsion technologies that have been kept from the public, even though they've been developed with taxpayer dollars. Tom Vallone also is a, another uh, a wonderful researcher. He's been a real champion of zero-point energy technology. Uh, he also serves on the board of, of New Energy Movement. Uh, he's, been, he's been a mentor and friend. And then, of course, there's Jean Manning. Uh, Jean has been more than a mentor. She's been a friend. She is a sister in spirit. And Brian had suggested New Energy Movement as a worthy endeavor and invited Jean and I to be uh, among the first on his board of directors of New Energy Movement. And Jean and I met for the first time there, even though I had been well aware of her for some time. Uh, her book, The Coming Energy Revolution, which is a classic, launched 12 years ago. And here we are 12 years later, and, and so much of what she, she revealed and portrayed in that book of, of her vision that these things would come about in, in, the, in, the, in those years between between uh, 1996 and the early uh, new millennium, uh, apparently st we're stymied. But yet here we are again, renewed and with a lot more eyes on it this time. A critical mass ready to make this happen. And it's going to happen. And Jean is one of 
these incredible people who she gives all the, the, the praise and credit to everybody else and, and rarely acknowledges how much she's put into it. And I'll tell you, she's, uh, she's so inspirational to me and she's a dear sister. And uh, Jean, I, I'd like you to come up and address everybody and uh, let us hear you. understand around energy technologies. It's uh, not necessarily necessary to um, be a nuclear physicist like our friend here in Monroe, it, it, although it would help, but we, we ordinary people can understand the need for clean energy technologies and we can understand that it's possible to have technologies that are surprise, surprise, in harmony with nature. And we can understand that in the 20th century, we went in the direction of a mechanistic science that was dealing with um, nature's movements that involve breaking down, you know, like nature composts what it doesn't need anymore and it burns its waste. And so heat, noise, friction, they're all part of, of nature's movements that are used to get rid of something that's not necessarily, and, it, and it, there's a mess involved. But uh, we have a, a we have people here like William Baumgartner who can go into great depth on this. But that's what excited me about the the whole field is when I realized that it wasn't just about you know better mousetrap, better invention. It was about working in harmony with nature, and, and that's that's where my heart is. I'm an idealistic person, and people have asked me why why I ended up in this scene. And it's, um, I guess it goes back to just basics that I assume everybody um, feels that way. A, a high school teacher made a big deal over an essay that I wrote at, when uh, he asked us for our philosophy of life. And I said, oh, I, I basically would like to leave the world a little bit better than was, uh, you know, for my having been here. And, and I was really surprised that everybody, and I'm sure everybody, I know everybody does, but I guess they don't. They don't uh, wear it on their sleeve like that. And there, there was another time when somebody asked me basically the same question. It was at one of the uh, Tesla technology conferences in um, Colorado Springs, and an engineer from Toronto, a consulting engineer that uh, John Hutchison knows very well, very well known, uh, he came up behind me. I was sitting in the middle of a of a meeting hall, and. and and I would just be there with my um, steno notebook and my camera and my tape recorder so that I could record the, the words of these scientists and take them home, take, not, not take the scientists home, take the notes home and uh, transcribe the tapes. And in, in the process, I, I learned a lot by transcribing the tapes. And at the time, I was writing articles for a magazine called Explore. The publisher, Christine Jackson, didn't have money to pay me, but she had lots of air miles because she um, back and forth to Germany a lot. So she provided the transportation so that I could go to these international conferences where the experts were speaking, and, and that was the best place, place to find them all clustered together and, and interview them. It was a lot more efficient than, than uh, traveling to each of theirs homes and labs, although I did a lot of that too eventually when I had a Canada Council grant for, for travel. Um, so anyway, he, he comes up to ask me on the shoulder and, and he said, asked, what, what does motivate you to come to these? 
And I kind of realized where he was coming from with the question because I'd heard people's little paranoid stories about industrial spies in our midst and uh, 